Hey friend, what is happening today? Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me while we paint this classic beast, the old pumpkin stack painting. I've decided to revive this for my YouTube channel. Um, and because it's an oldie but goodie, you may have already done this painting before, but you know what? It's nice to be reminded how to make all of our pumpkin lumps look mighty fantastic, super fun and rustic, and it never ceases to amaze me how many times we can use just like simple pumpkins in lots of random types of designs. So I'm gonna go through the supply list. I really hope you decide to join me today and just feel those fall vibes so strongly in this painting. Now we have a simple palette for this one. Uh, first of all, I'm on a 10 by 20 canvas. Now you are more than welcome to use a shorter canvas, a wider canvas. You might even want to put your pumpkins beside each other, or maybe you just want to do two pumpkins or keep it honestly, you get to decide, but it is nice to have a nice tall canvas for this really fun pumpkin stack painting. As far as supplies are concerned, I have a simple set of dollar store paints. You know, I don't feel like paints should painting should break the bank. So just hit up your local dollar store, grab some white. I have some brown. I have some black and orange and turquoise happening today. And then as far as my brushes are concerned, I have my holy trifecta of brushes. So I have my three quarter inch Batty McFatterson flathead. I have my half inch flathead brush and I have my nice long liner brush that I love to use for all sorts of twirly whirlies on my painting. Um, I have a napkin and a paper plate and a red solo cup for my water. Besides that, that is all we need. So grab up those supplies and let's get this party started. All right, so I am going to put my paints on my palette just one at a time as I need them. And what we're gonna do first is put a whole bunch of brown in the background. So we're gonna cover our whole canvas with a nice coat of brown. Now, I like this painting to be a rustic style painting. So I use a lot of water and I try not to fill in every single crack. I like to keep some of my um, painting in the background a little bit more dry. You see how I have these open areas here? That's just the canvas poking through because I actually didn't hit those spots. So I'm gonna grab my biggest brush that I have. I'm gonna grab some water and add a few drops of water to the side of my brown and just mix it in a little bit. So this is gonna help me move my paint around, fill it in pretty good without it being so thick on the background that I have to wait like hours and hours for it to dry. Not that that's the case ever with dollar store paints, but I just really want this to be a quick process. I don't want to overthink it. And I also don't want it to take too long. So when I'm filling up my background, you know, it's almost like a grid pattern. I go up and down, I go side to side and I push my paint around until it doesn't really push anymore. If I need to, I'll grab a little water and toss it on my canvas and just keep on pushing. Up and down and back and forth. Now you get to decide the level of rusticness that you want, but you know, if you're on uh, using a canvas today and you're gonna decide to put this on your living room wall when you're finished. You might as well hit up the sides of your canvas at the same time. So go over here, put some little rustic marks on the side of your canvas, on the top and bottom, so that nothing's miss getting missed out on and you don't have to worry about the sides not being painted. You can just go and put a little push pin in the wall and hang up your canvas. So I like there to be a, a few like varying degrees of my brown. You can see there's some lighter parts and there's some darker parts. 
So I know that most of this is going to get covered up in the middle. So I'm going to focus on just bringing in some nice dry parts into my corners, into the top. I'm going to flap in a little bit from the bottom here. And, you know, if it's not enough in the end, you can always add a little bit more around the edges when we're done. So once I'm getting to that full part, like where I'm feeling like my canvas is pretty filled up, I'm going to give it a once over with just a, a dry brush. So I'll wipe any excess off. It's not, I'm not putting any water on it. And I'm going to go side to side all the way up my canvas. Feel that rhythm up, 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 and up and down. And this is pushing my paint around so that not only is it giving it a more even ish tone to the background, but it's also moving my paint around so that it dries quite quickly. I'm going to do that once more, side, 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 side. And when I'm doing this, I'm going from one side to the other. I'm not stopping or anything like that. And that should do the trick. Now, I always like to take a second assessment. If I feel like it's not dark enough, this is a perfect opportunity to just grab a little extra brown. Maybe I'll just add a few little pieces kind of coming out from the sides just to add some varying tones to the background but mostly like sticking around the edges because I know that we're not going to see a lot of the background in the middle anyways so okay see how that changes it up we got all this light stuff happening but just adding a little bit in our in our corners and maybe a few little pieces coming from the outside edges. We'll just vibe it up enough. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to let it dry for a few minutes. And when we come back, we're going to start on the bottom with our big turquoise pumpkin. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so next step is we are going to be using some white, brown, and turquoise for our bottom pumpkin. So just make sure, you know, if you use up all your brown, throw a little bit more on your palette. Grab some turquoise. Now remember, because we're painting at home, all you need is a little dollop. I got, a, you know, a one inch about loony size if you're in Canada, loony toony size dollop of paint there. If I need more, I can always add more. And then some white over here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and use my big brush again for this process, but honestly, I just want you to know that if you, at any time, you feel more comfortable using a smaller brush, like this medium flathead brush or half inch flathead brush, however you wanna say it, you're more than welcome to do that. It's all good. Um, personally, we cover more space with the turquoise, so that's, that's why I do it. That's why I do it. <laughs> so as we build this pumpkin, we're going to start on each side and we're going to go over this way and over this way. Now, it's nice to have a little space on the outside when we get started because you never know where your lines are going to take you. So if we start a little smaller, we can always grow out towards the edge. And what ends up happening anyways is that I end up hitting the edge because it's just, it's hard to keep it all in check anyways. So I'm going to put just a little tap of water on my brush. I'm going to grab a little turquoise. And just remember, if you start small, you can always make it bigger. But if you go really big, it's a lot harder to make it smaller. Okay, so starting at the top. Now I'm just going to use the flat edge of my brush here. 
So when I'm going around the outside edge, I'm using the flat edge. I'm not making any wide marks yet. We can do that in a minute, okay? So starting on this side, all right, let's make sure I got... So the halfway mark of our canvas is roughly about here. So just hop down about two inches, one or two inches to about this point here, maybe even down a little bit lower, okay? I'm gonna put my brush on the canvas and pull over one way. And we're kind of making this apple shape here. I'm gonna hop over and I'm gonna pull over the other way. And you see how wonky that is? Well, that's because I started small and I know that I can start to fix up the edges as I go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to even out this side. And then I'm going to even out this side over here. There we go. Making my pumpkin nice and full. Heading over to the edges here, okay? So we are going to decide where our lumps are going to be. So these are our pumpkin lumps. We got one, two, three, four, five pumpkin lumps here. So starting about a step down from the middle, up here, step down, I'm going to go from the top, make that same swooping motion all the way down and hit this bottom middle. So we have this half moon here, all the way down to the bottom middle, okay? Same on the other side. We're gonna swoop down, all the way down to the bottom. So the tricky part about lumps is that they all come down all the way to the bottom, okay? So let's do that again. We're gonna go to the center, right here in the middle, we're going to hop down just a step here, go round, down to the bottom, round, down to the bottom, okay? Now, just for funsies, you don't have to do this yet. This is where our stem's going to go, somewhere in the middle here, okay? So just keep that in mind, and that's why we're leaving an open space there. We'll figure that out later though. All right, I'm just gonna rub it in. So the way pumpkins work is every lump has a highlight and a shadow. So the highlight is at the top of each lump and the shadow is right next to it. So you can see right here, we have this highlight coming down, 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 down. And the shadow is actually right next to our highlight in the lump before. All right, so that's just something to keep in mind as we're building our pumpkins, all right? So check this out. I'm gonna grab my, a nice scoop of turquoise. I'm not gonna stinge. I'm gonna take a nice big scoop. I'm gonna go up to the top. And when I'm making my brush strokes, I'm gonna follow all the way around down to the bottom. Okay, so from the top, all the way around down to the bottom. The first thing I'm gonna do is we, you know, we started at the top, we cruised around. So whatever side of your brush is hitting the top part of your pumpkin, all right? So right now it's this side that's going to hit that top part of the lump. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little scoop of white on my brush there. I'm gonna go back to that top part and I'm gonna cruise along that outside edge to give it that nice little highlight there, all right? Now, whatever part of your brush is on this side, so we got this bottom area of my brush that's gonna hit this other side of the lump, I'm gonna grab some brown. And I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna cruise all the way down this side, that outside, beside the next lump, right beside it, okay? So I'll show that to you one more time. Actually, five more times. <laughs> I'm gonna grab my turquoise. I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna follow that first line that I made the first time. 
color it in top to bottom try and follow this you know lumpy trajectory and the top part of my brush I'm gonna grab some white a little bit of white with my brush there and I'm gonna follow that top part so right next to the brown right next to it that's our highlight then I'm gonna grab a little brown and I'm gonna go right down on the other side so I'm using the bottom part of my brush now the bottom corner of my brush and going back and forth with that nice now personally I like my pumpkins to be a little bit more rustic looking than this but for now this is just giving us the idea of how the colors of a pumpkin work right so generally I have this like big brown line next to here and really it really shouldn't be brown the whole way it should really start about halfway down so if you want to take a little swoop of turquoise and kind of bring that big brown line down you can and then you can even take a little extra white just to make it a little bit more bright at the top all right so let's try the other side I'm gonna need more turquoise here we go all right so I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna shh. if you need to shoosh please do shh. all the way down to the bottom get a nice coat of paint on there you know I don't want it to be too thick but I want to be able to my brush to kind of feel like it's flowing back and forth right and whatever the top part of your brush is I'm gonna grab a corner of white and go down that way and then I'm gonna make sure that bottom corner grabs a little brown and I'm gonna go down this way so let's do that again I'm gonna grab some turquoise I'm gonna go color this next lump in all right next to that brown mark that I just made I'm gonna grab some white with the top part And then I'm going to grab some brown and go around that bottom left hand side of my lump here. Very nice. Now, last but not least, we always have this weird center lump, and basically, both sides are highlighted, and our shadows are coming down from up from the bottom. So, for this one, we're going to grab some turquoise and do the same thing we're going to follow the outline of it we already did the work figuring out where our lumps are going to be I'm going to follow the brown line on both sides here so I'm just right right in front of it or right on the side of it and my lump goes all the way down to the bottom here okay so all the way down to the bottom and for this one I'm gonna grab that white and I'm gonna cruise over a little bit this way and I'm actually gonna instead of you know just leaving it on the one side I'm just gonna pull a little bit in across the top and then same thing on the other side I'm gonna make a nice highlight over here Now, because our paint is wet, we might not be able to see it super good, but as long as you kind of get the idea that that's where the highlight's supposed to go, perfect. Now, from the bottom, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of brown on my brush and do the same thing, only opposite direction. I'm gonna start at the bottom, I'm gonna pull up and follow the shape. So I'm pulling over to the side this way, I'm pulling up in the middle, and I'm pulling over to the left over here. 
And that's a good beginning. That's a good start to our, to like understanding how pumpkins and pumpkin lumps work. Now we're at this point where, you know, you could probably leave it, leave it be right now, but I want to just give it one more bout of love because I like my pumpkins to look a little bit more rustic and not so put together. So I'm going to grab a little bit more turquoise and just make sure that I really like the shape of all of my pumpkin lumps. Okay. So this means that I can kind of just cruise along the whole pumpkin. Now that we kind of have an idea of where the highlights and lowlights should be, we can totally just add some turquoise to the whole thing. Adding the turquoise first gives us the opportunity to, um, to be able to blend wherever we want to. Sorry, I just got a little brain fart there, but just blend wherever we want. So a little layer of turquoise, pulling it down. Our pumpkin's starting to come together so we can start to swoop over some of the areas. It doesn't have to be so distinct. And I'm gonna start with my brown. I'm gonna start to just create a little bit more um, contrast in these areas. So I'm gonna pull up from the bottom and then I'm gonna take my brush and make some little swoops flowing upwards. Into my pumpkin right there. All right, I'm gonna do that on all my lumps. So I got I'm going along that that side there, and then up, up, up. And it's going to be a little bit darker at the bottom of our pumpkin. You can even bring a few little streaks up into your, a little higher if you want to. Same over here. I'm going to go up, follow that, follow that lump and then pull up. She's lump, she's lump, she's lump, she's in my head. There we go. And then we got one more lump right here. Pull up a few little drags up the lump there. Dragging up the lump, dragging up the lump. And there we go. Now, if you want to just darken this little area here a little bit more, we can. And now that we know we can kind of see where the highlights are, where the lowlights are, this is something that we can come back to one more time before we add our little fancy schmancy piece down here, okay? Now, last but not least, I'm going to take some white and I'm just going to do a couple little drags from the top of my pumpkin and following it down. And you can follow all along the side and top. This part of the lump separates it from the darker area. So having that brown spot there and then putting the white right next to it is enough of a contrast to show, oh, that's the top of the pumpkin, the bumps on the pumpkin. And then a few little drags on the top there and there we go. All good. Now you can see this has a little bit more white on it, but like I said, once our pumpkin is dry, we can add some more later. Now we're going to leave it like this and we're not going to put our stem on yet because we need to get that orange pumpkin on and we're going to do it the exact same way. Okay. So grab a little orange, pop it on your plate, Now this pumpkin's kind of almost the same size um, and it just goes to show that you can really change the shapes of your pumpkin as you want. So this one has a little bit more evenness to it. This one I like because it's a little shorter on the left hand side and a little bigger on the right hand side. 
So it gives it a little character and you know, most pumpkins are kind of like that, right? But for this one, instead of starting at the top and moving down, what I want to do is start on the top of my green and move up because that <laughs> nothing's worse than trying to aim for somewhere. I guess, you know, I guess it's not that bad. You can still aim for the top of the pumpkin. How about you do it? Whatever works best for you. Okay, so I'm going to start right in the middle here. Let's just bring it up a little bit. And remember, we need we need space at the top. We need enough space for our small pumpkin and a little stem at the top here. Okay, so just keep that in mind when we're putting this pumpkin on. We don't want to take up too much space. So I'm going to start down here with my uh, brush on its side. I'm going to pull up and over. one way and like I said I like it to have a little character so I'm going to put this here I'm going to pull up and over the other way and I'm going to make it a little bigger on this side see how I gave it like a little bit more girth on the right hand side there that's that's what I'm going for that's what I'm going for so I'm going to decide where my lumps are going to live I'm just going to I'm going to pull this one out a little bit further over this way And I'm going to put a lump here all the way down to the bottom. Okay, we're not going in the middle, like above the bottom. We're hitting that bottom piece there, okay? And then again, over on this side, all the way down, following that same trajectory, and then to the bottom, down here. Two more. I'm going to start right here at the top and then I'm going to lump it down all the way to the bottom. <laughs> and I know I keep saying that, but I often find that people will make, make it and it ends up looking a little phallic because it's got like, uh, it looks, it looks intimate, I should say, because it ends up having like these like circles in the middle, but every one of these lumps, you want to bring it all the way down to this bottom part of your pumpkin. Okay, I don't want any floaters in the middle. And around, down to the bottom again. Nice. So now that we have a really good idea of how the lights and darks work in our pumpkin, what we can do from this point, just take, take a nice scoop of orange and we're gonna paint each lump in, okay? And I want you to just leave a little bit showing before you reach the next lump. See, I did a really bad job of it right there. So check this out. I'm going to follow this lump all the way to the bottom, but I'm going to leave a little empty space here before I get to the next lump. So I'm following the outside edge all the way down. back and forth and I want to see a little space there not very big just enough to kind of let our brains know that we need to put the darker area there again follow the top of the lump follow 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 the pumpkin lump follow 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 la, 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 la. I'm gonna leave a little space see what's happening here and then I'm gonna color this last one in the whole thing all the way down to the bottom all right so our paint is still pretty wet so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that corner so you can put a just a little not, I'm not taking a big scoop of orange. I'm just going to put a little bit on my brush and then using that bottom part of my brush, that's going to swoop along that bottom edge of our, of our pumpkin lump. I'm going to grab that corner brown. Don't you love that vintageness right there? Maybe not even that much brown, maybe a little less than that. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and start to go back and forth and start to bring in that dark part of our lump. Now, you have the brown on your brush, so if you feel like it, you can totally just kind of swoop a few little pops up into your pumpkin, but not necessary right now, all right? Same thing here, I'm gonna grab a little orange and I'm gonna grab a corner of brown and I'm gonna follow where I left the space. So we're filling in the brown space with more brown is what's happening right now. And I'm just gonna keep kind of making those nice long brush strokes from the top to the bottom you start to get these little streaks because we have a little variety of color on our brush already. So having those natural brush stroke streakies in there really, it, it makes it instantly look like a pumpkin. All right. So again, I'm going to grab some orange. Now I'm changing the sides because the other side of my brush is going to be the one that hits that lump right there. Right. So I'm going to grab a little brown on that side. And I'm going to follow along throw down a couple little stro strokes of brown in the bottom there and then just kind of go up and down with my brush a few times again a little orange just a little bit and then follow the lump There we go. All right. So we have all the dark areas of our pumpkin right now. I'm just going to give my brush a little wipe and I'm going to do the same thing this time, but with just a little bit of white on my brush. Same deal though. I'm going to just, you know, put a little bit of orange on my brush, not too much. And then with that top part, wherever that's going to follow along the outside edge, I'm going to grab a little white and I'm going to swing along that outside part there. Swing, swing. Now, if you want, you can always just take a couple little extra drags, but Having that little highlight up there is a really big deal. So again, I'm gonna grab a little orange, a little corner of white, and I'm gonna swing right next to that brown. Swing. <laughs> swing, swing, swing. A little orange. I'm gonna grab some white with the other corner of my brush go around the other side. Now the reason I put the orange on the brush first is because we're we're blending these colors right and the orange is already there so if I only have orange on half or if I only have white on the little corner it's gonna just because I'm going with the flow here it naturally blends itself in with the orange that's already there. So I put a little orange to start, grab a little corner of white, and that's going to give me that nice natural highlight on the outside edge of my, of my lump. Okay. Now the tricky part, I'm going to grab a little orange and I'm just, I'm going to do another little once over here. Just grab a little orange and Fill in this middle area. And then I'm going to grab a little white and pull down. Now, because we have wet paint 
our white and our brown aren't going to show up as nicely as they will after our paint is dry. So it's really nice right now to have these highlights and lowlights to see where everything's going. But truly, when everything gets the chance to kind of dry a little bit, it's all going to be really way easier to add the, the highlights and the, the shadows into our pumpkins. So it's up to you. You can do that right now if you want to. If you want to just take it, uh, do a once over and grab a little extra brown and, you know, pull in a few little extra strokes from the bottom just to see how she's going. I'm going to just pull a few up from the bottom here. Do, 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 do. Yay! And now we have our highlights and lowlights. Fantastic, mes amis. All right. I'm just going to give a little switcheroo to my napkin here. The old flop over. Start using the other side. And we are going to get that last white pumpkin up at the top. I'm going to use my big brush again, even though it's a small pumpkin, but alas, you do you. Now, as opposed to what I said last time of starting on the bottom and working our way up, we want to make sure we have room for a little stem up here. Okay. So grab some white on your brush and just start so that you know you have enough space up at the top. Okay. So I'm going to start up here and pull just about an inch and go down about an inch. And then I'm going to make my apple shape. And it's super wonky, but that's okay because I'm going to bring it down and up this way. And I'm going to extend it over this way a little bit, just a little. And then just a little further over, just a little further over. And then I'm going to make my lumps. So we got one, two, three. Ooh, this one has more lumps than the other ones. What do I got? One, two, three, four, five, six lumps. And I'm going to do this six. So this one's going to come here. And then we got one here and one here, one here. Okay. So many funny lumps. I don't think I did that right. Because I had one, two, three. I still only have five. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense because I'm missing this one right here. Shh. Okay, so we have this nice little center one here. And then we have all these other lumps happening. But just remember, all of our lumps go all the way down to the bottom of our pumpkin. All right. So let's do the same method that we used for the orange pumpkin here. I'm going to grab some white. And as I'm filling it in, I'm just going to leave that little crevice of brown there. Honestly, just shoosh. It makes it way smoother. 
smooth sailing when you're shooshing around. And then over here, I'm just going to leave that little, that little bugger there. And again, and again, and then the center one is going to get all filled in. Now, obviously we have a white pumpkin and we use white for our highlights, right? So what we're going to do is basically, it's going to end up kind of looking like a little bit of a taupe pumpkin. It's a little, uh, you know, we're using white as the highlights, but brown is the majority of our, um, like, nuances in our pumpkin. So I'm just going to give my brush a rinse. And just like I did for the other ones, I'm going to actually add just a little extra white onto my palette here. A little more white. And I'm going to grab some white. And then I'm going to grab my corner of brown like I did with the others. And I'm going to follow along the inside lump. And then shush up a couple pops brown here. All right, a little white, a little corner of brown, going all the way downtown. All right, so let's do it again, because we have one more lump this time. All right, little white. I'm going to grab a little bit of brown and shh. You know, if you're feeling like this is really annoying, just remember, man, chill out. It's all for fun. So if you feel like you're clenching your jaw, give yourself a break. Unclench the jaw. Give yourself a little smile, a little giggle, <laughs> and keep lumping, my friend. So I'm going to grab a little white, and now on the other side, I'm going to grab my brown and follow it downtown, <laughs> all the way down to the ground. All right, again, again. A little white, a little brown, and all the way to the ground. Perfect. Now I'm just going to grab some straight white, and I'm going to color that in, following my lumps. And I'm going to take a little brown on my brush. And I'm gonna follow, you know, I'm gonna put, put a little more on there, follow my lumps. I'm gonna drag in a little bit of brown from the bottom. And then I'm gonna do that on all of my lumps. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of brown, swing in a little bit into each bottom area of what is supposed to be my white pumpkin. So I'm running into this issue right now because my brush is too big and it's just like when I go to pull down, it's pulling in the paint from the other lump because it's, it's just too big. So that's when you take your other brush. You take your littler brush and just get in there and do the same thing, only it's littler so you can actually get into these little crevices that Dang, it's hard to do with your big brush. <laughs> so I'm just going to get in there and I'm going to go once. I'm going to go back and forth. I'm going to put a little white on my brush and just make sure I'm, I'm liking the shape of my pumpkin. If it looks a little dry on the sides, just add a little extra uh, paint to your brush so that you can fill in all those little canvas crackies. I like to bring my brush back and forth a few times to make sure that it's nice and smooth. Oh, I'm getting light all over it. All right. 
and voila now I feel like this needs a little bit more brown around the outside edge but like I said before we have the opportunity we have one more opportunity to do that before we go ahead and you know finish all the little finishing touches but for now before we do that we're gonna fudge on our stems because we need to make sure that we have um, two coats of paint on our stems. Brown is a very transparent color, so it takes a couple um, it takes a couple goes to make sure that it's nice and opaque on our canvas. All right. So first things first, I want you to know that you can make whatever shape. Um, stem that you want. You can see I have three different kinds here. I have like a tall skinny, I have a leany pointy, and I just have a little short nubbin one up here. Okay, so you can really choose however you want to do it. First things first, I'm going to grab my medium flathead brush and I'm going to put some um, some brown on it. And because white is a little bit more opaque than brown, I'm just going to bring in a little bit of white in with my brown. It's going to help us see it a little better too on top of the brown background. Lots of brown town, lots of down, downtown, brown, bring it down, down to the ground type sayings today. And you can start, I like to start inside this little crevice here. So it's almost like, think of a tree trunk and how it grows into the ground. And that's what's happening here. It's going in, coming out of our pumpkin. So in each one of these little pumpkin crack crevices, we're going to kind of pull it up like a tree trunk okay and then we're going to merge a little bit into each little crevice so we got one that's going behind the pumpkin back there and then one that's going to kind of come down and into this little crack here around the top of this lump and into these little crackies All right, so really get it in there. <laughs> you know, if it's not looking right, you can always like elevate the middle lump. I feel like is a way to kind of make it not look so wonky at the top. And you can always go back in and like, you know, bring, <laughs> bring the cracks together a little better. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just going to leave it at that and and just let it dry for now. I'm just going to let that dry. I'm going to go over to the other side. Same thing. I'm going to start in the little crack and I'm going to pull up and over. And I'm going to make the first bit of stem living in my pumpkin. There we go. And alas, the final little nubbin. I'm just going to give them a little, little pop. You know how pumpkins are, man. It's like you like some stems are like weaker than others and you can see which ones like the ones that are like ingrained into the pumpkin. Those are the ones that don't like crack at the top. Okay, and that's a really good start. So we are going to let our stems dry for a minute. And then when we come back, we are going to finish those off, add a, a few little extra um, pieces of shadow into the base of our pumpkins, and then put on our final touches. Okay, wait, let's, uh, let's finish this painting off. So we need to finish by just adding a few extra shadows and highlights into our pumpkins. I'm gonna start by just grabbing, I, I'm gonna use my medium flathead brush for this, just this little, um, the smaller version of my big one. And 
add some brown to my brush and I'm just gonna add a few extra little pulls of brown into the base of some of my pumpkins. So I'll pull up the crack a little. <laughs> it's so funny, just, just we're sticking to the cracks here with our brown paint. <laughs> and uh, I kind of just like use the natural like um, like roundness of my wrist. You know how you have like a natural way that it goes around and up and down? So that's what I'm using for this. I'm just kind of like that natural little swoop upwards and just making sure that it's got that nice brown hue at the bottom so that it really looks like it's got some nice big lumps on it. And you know, you don't need a lot of paint on your brush because when you're kind of flowing up into your into each section of your pumpkin here, I like it to look a little dry. It's almost like we're putting on the excess of brown down here. Um, and it gives it like that rustic feel that I keep talking about. You like, it doesn't overtake it. You can still see little bits of turquoise kind of popping through the background, but, um, but it just darkens it enough to really give it that, that kind of dirty vibe. And up at the top, you know, you can put a little bit more definition in the top ones too, if you'd like. Just a, it, one tiny little brush stroke can change everything. Then I'm just going to go into my stem and give it a second coat of brown here. And this time I'm just, I'm going to give it a coat of brown. Just straight brown. And then I'm going to put a little white on the corner of my brush. And I'm just going to drag in a couple little white pieces that pull from the base, kind of make it look like it's got a little bark on it. Perfect. So I'm going to do that again with my orange pumpkin. Just, just little bits, a little brown at the bottom. My orange one already has quite a bit of brown at the bottom, so I don't feel like it's necessary to do too much. Just, just making sure that all this, that those crevices are really visible. And then put that second coat on my stem. So a little coat of brown, and then I'll grab a little white with the corner of my brush. And just drag in some little highlights into my stem here. Beauty. Okay. One more. I'm gonna sure I got some nice deep low lights on my white pumpkin here so I kind of like you know I grab some paint and I follow up the crevice so up the crack and then I just kind of drag the rest up from the bottom and it's almost like I'm wiping my brush off Perfect. I love it. Oh, I forgot. And one last coat of paint on my stem with a tiny little bit of white. Just kind of bring my brush back and up and down and let it, um, let it mix in a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to give my brush a good rinse and I'm going to do the same thing with the white. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of white. I'm going to grab a little white with my brush. And then on the top areas, just add a few extra little highlights 
to give it that pop of brightness up at the top. on all the lumps. So I just did that and to me it it's almost like I feel like I put too much white so if that happens you know you can always take a little orange and just bring it back bring it back down a notch there's no shame there's always this ebb and flow when it comes to painting right you don't have to keep it there if you don't like it you just got to take whatever color it it took in the first place and just bring it down a notch that that to me is way better now for a white pumpkin obviously it already looks white if you feel like it looks a little too brown, you can always grab just a little extra white to pop along the top part of, of your lumps. And it's really, you'll see a difference, especially if you use a lot of brown in it, um, how it really highlights the top areas. There we go. Nice. Okay, so just take an extra minute to finish off those highlights and lowlights. And then when we come back, we're gonna put on all the rest of our little curly cues and whatever stick happenings that is down there. All right, friends, so all these little kind of curly bits that we have happening, um, it's just for fun and you can see that I used brown and green and white ones. Now the key to making nice little curlies, I have this nice long liner brush here that I love to use and it works so much better when I add water into my paint with it. All right. So when I grab my brush, I'm going to grab my, I'm going to put it in the water and I'm going to add a little bit of water into whatever color I'm going to use. So. I grab this scoop of water and I'm going to add it to my turquoise and I get my brush nice and filled up so it's full 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 of paint. Now I don't want it to drip or anything um, so I just give it a little twist to squeegee off any excess but you really want to make sure that it's it you can see it actually move on your plate it doesn't get sticky and make sure that you have it nice and full with a nice little point on the end so you can see here now, as I'm kind of making curly cues, because I have it nice and full, I should be able to do it in one little round swoopy instead of making little lines to fill it in the whole time. Now, this takes a little bit of practice and the reality is, is we're not using the whole brush. We're just using the tip of the brush, even though it's all full. So just try and be very light. Honestly, whenever I'm trying to do things like this, I'll, I try and anchor my hand as much as possible. So sometimes I'll put my finger on my on the side of my canvas, something because if I'm doing it from afar, I get like a little shaky. I'm like, oh, I can't do it. So wherever you're going to get started, make sure I have a nice little point on the end where I'm going to get started. And coming out of this crevice, I'm just going to start by taking a breath and then and letting the brush just graze from the top all right now I feel like I should have been able to go further than that but because I, I ran out of paint I'm gonna go reload I'm gonna start off for where, from where I left off start from where I left off so I'm gonna pull into that line make another little round part and up let's do that again so I'm gonna start in this little crevice here I'm gonna put my finger on my canvas to get started 
and pull up and over. And that made a decent one. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the white. So I'm gonna grab some water, grab a little bit of white paint, and make a few curly cues there. So I put my finger on my canvas and <gasps> honestly, if you shoosh, it makes it way easier. I'm gonna do another one. <gasps> And then I'm going to make a couple brown ones. So a little water. I'm going to grab, get my paint nice and liquidy, almost more inky than painty. Like you want it to be nice and inky. So go down to the ground, get a nice little fill it up, fill up my brush completely, give it a little twist, and Kind of just go with the flow. You just got to roll with it. Keep that momentum. Sometimes they turn out better than others. One more. All right. Enough with the curlies. Now, this makes a decent, nice little... Um, painting as it is. If you don't feel like you want to put the little stickies down at the bottom, you definitely don't have to. If that's the case, I suggest making sure that you have a little bit of a shadow at the bottom to make it look like these pumpkins are actually sitting on something. So you can, because our background's already brown, you can try using brown. So if you grab a little brown and kind of give it a little, you know, back and forth, little darkness down at the bottom, that's cool, but I feel like adding just a little black to that is going to really allow it to make it look like these pumpkins are actually stacked off the ground here. Just taking a tiny, 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 tiny little black and mixing it in down there is going to really give it a nice dimensional quality. Okay? Cool. I mean, Technically, you could kind of do that with all of these if you want to give them just a little little shadow on each pumpkin, but that's up to you. I'll leave that up to you. Now for these sticks, we're going to do the same thing as we did with the curly cues. I'm going to grab my long liner brush, add some water to the side of my black, get it nice and liquidy, squeegee up. I'm going to give my brush a nice twist so that it, uh, it, it squeegees off all the excess water. And then I'm going to start at one side and shoot. Now, as I get to the top, I'm going to kind of just give my brush a little wiggle and ding. And this is funny because you really only have to use just the tip of your brush. Okay. So when I do that again, I'm going to kind of get started in side my stick here and I'm going to start to branch off. I like to kind of get started in where I've already started and then make a few little branches out like that instead of starting fresh on because I just did that and now you have to kind of you end up with like overlapping sticks that way. All right so I'm going to do I think that's good for that side actually. So down at the bottom here, I'm just going to thicken it up, give it a little base, and then do the same thing from the other side. So I'm going to start on this side and do a little crisscross. I'm going to wiggle my brush a little bit like kind of that's the noise that gets made in my head when I make these, when I make branches. Just because it's like not smooth, it's like a <laughs> That's how I hear it in my head. <laughs> and then one more is going to come out this side here. With a couple little stickies there. 
So we're just, you know, you can put however many little, uh, little offshoots of these branches that you want. There's no right or wrong amount. And then I finish it off by grabbing my medium flathead brush and I take like a scoop with the corner of my brush. I, I take a nice scoop of paint. See, it's kind of dripping and I, and I drip it onto my canvas. So we're going to take a scoop of white and we're just going to make these little dots kind of at random all the way on all the side of the branches. So some are going to be bigger, some are going to be smaller. Honestly, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't even have to touch the branch. It could just be hovering on each side of it. And we're going to do that on both sides, just kind of like gooping it on. And it's kind of cool because when you're done, it goops it on, but it'll have kind of like a little embossed feel. So it'll be elevated off your canvas. And however many sticks you made is however many spots you gotta add these little embellishments. Now, if you want to get fun with it, it doesn't have to just be white. You could absolutely take a little bit of turquoise, but I mean, now that I say that out loud, the turquoise on the um, turquoise pumpkin isn't going to work anyways. So nonetheless, I have to just widen this branch down at the bottom. And then we have completed the process, my friend. If you want to go ahead and add a few little highlights around with your liner brush and add in a few little extra pieces of white or brown in places, you're more than welcome to do that. And if you went and did this all in one sitting, like way to go, you should feel super proud of yourself. So grab your brush, put your little signature on the bottom. I just put a little JR. Whatever yours is, is great by me. <laughs> and uh, if you want, I would love it if you take a picture of your painting and post it in the Julie's Paint Party public Facebook group so we can all see how amazing you did. I appreciate you painting with me today and I'll see you soon, friend. Bye.